Hello everyone, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel and welcome to week two of our Global Mazda MX-5 Cup Track Guide series here on iRacing. Now week two brings us to Okiyama, an absolutely incredible track to race around in the Mazda and one that's used pretty much every season. I can't remember a season where the Mazda hasn't raced around Okiyama. So if you've followed my track guides before, you'll know that they are not a place for hot laps. It's a slow methodical approach to learn the circuit where we talk about my braking markers, my reference points and the little quirks that each circuit has. As usual, I'll show you a flying lap in full, then we'll jump in the car, do a couple of laps and show you those braking markers and reference points in action. So enough talking, let's get on track. Okay, so here we are on the main start and finish straight here at Okayama. So as usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 25th of December 2021 and the time is 12 noon. Merry Christmas from Okayama. We're also using the iRacing baseline setup, which is what is used in the official series. And for information, track temperature right now is 31 degrees, exactly the same as it was in the flying lap that you've just seen. Now, Okayama... Probably one of the first races I ever did on iRacing was at Okiyama in the Global Mazda. And it's always offered great racing, but it's hard to overtake. We'll go over that later on. So, turn number one. It's all about flow, Okiyama. It's all about not scrubbing off too much speed with the tyres. So, we're going to be fourth gear going down the main straight. And we're going down to second gear for turn number one. Now, you can see the Dunlop Bridge that we're just going under there. Breaking marker I use are these tyre marks just above the instrument cluster there that you can see. They never change. They are there all the time. That is a brilliant braking marker for turn number one. We're going to be going all the way down to second gear. We're going to be braking probably about 60% and then just trail braking to the apex. And then as soon as we get to the apex, this worn piece of grass on the right, we can get on the accelerator. Let the car push all the way out wide. Again, don't try and hold a tight line that will just scrub off too much speed and ruin your tyres. The car will run all the way out to the left, but we need it over to the right for turn number two. Now, depending on how you get out of turn number one, will determine whether you need third gear at this point or not. Um, I frequently just hold second gear with the new Mazda, with the new gearbox, let it bounce off the rev limiter. I find that that's quicker than going up to third and then downshifting back to second and unsettling the car. I would much rather just leave it in second gear, let it let second gear let it bounce off the limiter. 
Now, for here, it's a tiny, tiny bit of breaking for turn number two, and then we're letting it coast to the apex. And just before the green curb on the right-hand side, that's where we're going to be breaking. We're going to be breaking a tiny bit and turning in at the same time, because just to get the, the front of the car loaded, to get it turning towards the apex. Now, you let it coast at this point. Let it get to the apex. We're in second gear. But as soon as we're touching this curb on the inside... We're getting back on the accelerator really hard. Let the car run out wide. Again, don't hold the tight line. It will just scrub the tyres. Let the car run all the way out wide. You can use a little bit of this sand on the exit. It's fine. Then up to third gear. Move the car over to the left over this green curb. Make the track as short as you possibly can. Same with the right-hand side. And then the run down to turn number four. The tricky turn number four. Now, braking mark here for me is in between the 150, probably about 75 metres. And we're going to be braking in a straight line, keeping nice and wide to open up turn number four. Because we want to apex it quite late, because it's all about the run out of the turn up the hill. So, braking around about 75 metres in a straight line. And then we're going to be turning in towards the apex. Touch the kerb on the right-hand side. And then as soon as you see that, whatever that is ahead there, is that some kind of burnt seating or some kind of picture? I don't know what it is. It looks like burnt spectator seating to me. That's our cue to get back on the accelerator. And this time we do want to hold a tight line. Don't let the car track out wide. Hold the tight line. Follow this curb all the way up the hill. Past the DRS zone. When we get past the DRS zone, then we can move across to the left-hand side. The DRS sign, should I say. Up to fourth gear. And we're going to be breaking here. Probably around 80 metres. So after the 100 board, probably about around 80 metres. And this is the heaviest braking zone on the circuit. We're probably going to be up to 80, 90% braking here. And we're going to be braking in a straight line initially, but then slowly pointing it towards the apex and holding the brake all the way to the apex. This is nice and banked. There's quite, quite a bit of grip here. All the way to the apex, nice and tight. And then as soon as you see the end of the curb, get on the accelerator. The car will run out left. But then we need the car back over to the right-hand side. Now, at this point, what I like to do is short shift to second gear. And then you can see there's a piece of burnt grass on the right-hand side there, or worn grass. We're going to be turning in before that point for turn number six. Now, turn number six is quite blind. You can't really see it. The track dips down quite a bit there. But you need to cut this inside curb quite a bit to get a reasonable lap time around Okayama. It's all about keeping the momentum of the car going, trying to keep that speed up. So we're going to be turning in just before that point, off the accelerator. But as soon as we're on the apex, as soon as we're on the apex, get back on the gas. The car will probably jump around a little bit. It will feel a little bit unsettled, but it's fine. Get on the gas and let the car run all the way out wide. And you can use all of this on your exit maybe even a little bit of the sand just to the right hand side of the car then keep going forward if you look where our car is now you would think that the racing line or where the car should be is to the left of the white line but as you can see we are to the right of the white line we're probably a little bit too far over now actually probably need to be about a foot to the left but we're going to use the end of the curb on the right hand side to our advantage we're going to use that to widen the circuit as much as we can so run over this curb on the right hand side and just at the end of it we're going to be trail braking a tiny bit a little bit of brake just to get the car to the apex but as soon as we're on the apex we're going to be hitting the accelerator letting the car run all the way out wide and for the turn uh, for run up to turn number eight braking marker here for this one we're going to be just the third gear braking marker the 50 board we're going to be braking down to first gear in a straight line open up this left turn as much as we can apex it quite late because you sometimes have to sacrifice a little bit of speed through turn number eight because we need the car position correctly for turn number nine so don't get on the gas really early here don't let the car push all the way out wide for turn number nine because then we're just going to lose far too much speed so you want your car coming out of turn number eight kind of in the middle of the circuit no more because we want the car over to the left hand side to open up turn number nine so again, we're going to be trail braking a little bit to the apex. As soon as we see the end of the curb on the right-hand side, we're going to be smashing that accelerator. 
let the car run all the way out wide up to second gear and just before we hit the apex or turn number 10 we're going to be up to third gear maybe a tiny lift if you need to just to put the weight of the car on the front tires just to help it turn round turn number 10 that's third gear and then for turn number 11 final turn we're going to be on the brakes down to second gear now braking marker here is just after the curb on the left hand side just after the astroturf that you can just see there so just after they're braking down into second gear again trail braking to the apex it's not a massive amount of brake here we're just trail braking to the apex but as soon as we're there we want to be smashing that accelerator and let the car run all the way out wide because you can use all of this on exit make the track as wide as you can so we'll pick up the pace a little bit now so turn number one looking for those tire marks we're gonna be breaking down to second gear turning quite early as soon as we're on the apex as soon as you see the curb ending we're going to be in the accelerator let the car run out wide but get it back over to the right hand side a little bit of brake let it coast to the apex then get on the accelerator again let it run out wide just let the car go where it wants to go just to keep up that momentum so turn number four braking around about the 75 meter board straight line down into second gear here is where we want to keep it tight now don't let the car run out wide keep it tight all the way up the hill past the drs sign when we do we can move over to the left hand side up to fourth gear down the straight for turn number five about the 80 meter mark where we're going to be braking here quite hard initially around about 80 90 percent and all the way down to first gear apex late then get on the accelerator car will run out wide short shift to second then we're going to turn and we're going to clip a bit this curb on the inside but get on the gas use this curb here to, 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 to our advantage to make the track as wide as we can 50 board we're going to be breaking down into first gear open up this left hander again wait till you get on the accelerator don't get on it too early open up this right looking for the end of the curb there it is that means we can get on the accelerator into second just before we hit the apex we're going to be going to third little lift then breaking down into second gear as soon as we're on the apex we're going to get on the accelerator and use all of this on exit right we'll pick up the pace for one final lap we're looking for those tire marks there they are so down into second gear as soon as we're on the apex get on the accelerator let the car run all the way up wide but back over to the right just before the green curb a little bit of brake and get on the accelerator at the apex up to third just let the car do what it wants to do and run about the 75 meter board we want to be braking down into second gear turning quite late and get on the accelerator keep it tight all the way up the hill past the DRS sign then move over to the left then run about 80 meters we're going to be breaking hard for turn number five nice and tight get on the accelerator short shift to second and lift and cut this then get on the accelerator use this to your advantage under on the apex get on the accelerator no off track there that's fine just run off a little bit and break in at the 50 nice tight line wait for the end of the curb then same here we're going to be breaking trail breaking to the apex there's the end of the curb means we can get on the gas fully and just before the apex here we're going to be short shifting to third little lift of the throttle and braking down to second gear to the apex then get on the accelerator and run down the street there we go that's a nice steady lap around the full circuit at okiyama and what did we get there that was a 46 479 i think we did a 46 flat in the flying laps definitely uh, need to be in the 45s i think this this kind of temperature for me this week it's a really good fun circuit always offers really good close racing but overtaking is a bit of an issue that we're going to go into so let's have a look at pit entry and pit exit first of all 
So the pit entry here at Okiyama is actually quite tricky. Now, if you need to pit in this series, it's because you've got damage and you're going to go in for your fast repair or you've got a penalty which you haven't cleared. So pit entry. So just go around turn number nine before you approach turn number 10. We need the car over to the right hand side. You can see the sign there. Pit in is the start of the pit lane. We we'll move the car over the white line. Nice and steady down here. It's really, really tricky. We don't want to be going past that yellow line because we will get an unsafe pit entry. And then the run down this turn here is quite tricky. You saw the 60 sign there. This is actually where the yellow cone is, not there. We we'll need the pit limiter on before this point. As long as you take it nice and steady, it's not too bad. But just bear in mind that if you go across that yellow line, then you may get an unsafe pit entry penalty. Pit exit here at Okiyama is not too bad. Apart from the obvious where the end of the blue cone is the turning point really for turn number one. So release the pit limiter at the green cone. You've got to stay within this white line on the left hand side until we pass the blue cone. But as you do, you, you'll see that this is where people are going to be turning in. So as always, keep an eye on your relative. If some cars are coming by to lap you, just yield. Let those go, those guys by. And then just try and slot in behind them when you can. Right. Overtaking at Okiyama. Oh, boy. So, overtaking at Okiyama is notoriously difficult, especially in the Mazda MX-5. There's only... Probably three places where you can get it done properly. Obviously, going into turn number one, that's an obvious place down the inside if somebody doesn't defend. But what if somebody does defend? What are you are going to do? Well, you're going to try and get the move done coming out of turn number four. That's the place where I've done most of my overtakes here at Okiyama because I'm quite happy that as long as you get turn number four right, Nobody's going to get by you as long as you've got reasonable pace. You can defend everywhere else quite easily. Nobody's going to go around the outside here at Okiyama. So we're going to assume that somebody's defending into turn number one. They're taking this line here. Well, we're going to start setting the move up coming out of turn number four at this point. So we'll take our normal line. We'll try and get a really good exit. We'll keep right on their rear bumper. We want to keep the pressure on all the way from this point. No doubt, again, they will defend going around turn number two because they think that going around the insides going to be quicker. Well, it isn't. We take our normal line and we want a really good run coming out of turn number two because now they're going to be thinking, I'm going to defend into turn number four and you're thinking, you crack on. You defend into turn number four because you don't know what's coming. What we're going to do here guy you're racing against is going to be over here. He's going to be defending like crazy. He's not going to let you by. And because he's got the inside line, he's got to break a little bit earlier. But he's probably going to use the same breaking marker that he's always used, which is going to mean he's going to go wide. If needs be, we're going to take the outside line and we can break a little bit later than usual because we're going to go for the switcheroo. So he's going to break harder. He's going to fly past on our inside. And what we're going to do is, when we get to this point here, he's going to be in the middle of the circuit or even wider. And when he's there, as long as we hold this inside line, there is absolutely no way from this point that he's going to get the move done. You may have to move over here. Just cover this little bit of concrete here so he doesn't get up back up the inside. But as long as you've got the inside line going towards turn number five, there's no way anybody is going to make it around the outside. You can try all he wants as long as you're disciplined and stick to your braking marker and hold this line here, this tight line, as long as you don't run wide and allow him to switch back, he ain't going to get around the outside here. So that's my advice there. That's the only way that I've been able to successfully get an overtake done. When you're racing against guys of a similar pace, it's really difficult to overtake or it's really easy to defend round here mm, you might get an overtake done if it's a bit of a lunge but you might just have to defend on here just bear in mind that if you don't want to lose the position 
just hold the inside line. If you hold the inside line around turn number eight, turn number nine, then they're not going to carry enough speed to get around the outside. So that would be my advice. So overtaking, up the inside turn number one, up the inside turn number five, the usual places. But the switch back at turn number four is where the move's going to be done for me. So there we go. That's week two done here at Okiyama. Please let me know down below in the comments how you get on. What were your times before the guide and what were your times after? Did I help? Did I cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide? Also, let me know if the move at turn four works for you. Next week, we go to Lime Rock Park Grand Prix layout, which should be incredible fun. Another great circuit for the Mazda. As always, thank you for watching. Good luck this week. Remember to keep it pinned.